Hello everyone, in this video I'll talk to you about interaction in linear regression analysis. So for example, if we want to explore how your enjoyment to food is affected by the condiment, the topping that you add to your food. We are going to study two kinds of food. A little salty hot dog, something that I don't eat and I don't recommend you eating, too much of processed meat, and ice cream, another kind of food that I like but I don't recommend you eating because it is packed with sugar. In any case, we're going to study the effect of mustard as a topping and chocolate sauce as a topping on different foods. For example, do you think ice cream tastes better or worse when we add mustard to it compared to that when we add chocolate sauce? Or do you think hot dog tastes better if we add chocolate sauce to it rather than mustard? This is the kind of example, it's a classic example, it's very easy to understand. You already know the result beforehand. This is why I like this example. You probably would know that hot dog tastes better with mustard than that with ice cream compared to that with ice cream. And likewise, ice cream tastes better not likewise, in fact, ice cream tastes better. On the other hand, ice cream tastes better with chocolate sauce rather than with mustard. How do we work with this analysis? First thing that you need to do is to code these categorical variables. This is categorical variables. So we are going to deal with uh, linear regression analysis with categorical variables. First thing first, we need to transform our code these uh, categorical variables into numbers. So we say if, so we use the if function and say if this cell value is equal to hot dog and we put it in between double quotes or quotes because it is text. So if this value is equal to this text, give me one, else give me two, all right? Now I suggest that you put this as uh, 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 three and four if you want. I put it as two and three because I know that when we do the interaction, the condiment on the food, so we need to add one more variable here, the interaction between them, we are going to uh, end up with um, uh, different values for the interaction variable. So this is the data that we are working with and for for now we are talking about hot dog with mustard, hot dog with ice cream sauce, right? Or with the chocolate sauce. And in general, we're talking also about ice cream with mustard and with a chocolate. Okay, so we're talking about two kinds of foods. So in terms of food, we will have, uh, uh, let me just take these away for now. We will have hot dog is one and ice cream is two. In terms of um, condiment, we have mustard and a chocolate sauce, and this is two and three. And I know that the interaction between them, which is basically here, hot dog and mustard, hot dog and ice cream uh, uh, and chocolate. This will be nothing but hot dog is one times mustard is two. So I expect the value to be two. And this value hot dog is also one multiplied by chocolate will be a three. So I will have two and the three as values, right? And over here, I know that I will have ice cream multiplied by mustard and then I will have also ice cream multiplied by chocolate sauce. So I have over here different values for the interaction, the interactions. 
So I am fine. I don't need to put this as one, two, three, four. But if you want to have a peace of mind and so, you can just put it one, two, three, four. But also make sure that the, uh, for example, what, 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 for example, what? Uh, four times one and two times two are both equal to four. So I always, I always make sure that these guys are different just for my own uh, uh, ease, ease of dealing with data. Not necessarily it will affect the data analysis or the results, okay? Just for the ease of use uh, of the analysis. This is, I'm going to call it the index of the coding or the coding index. This is very important in any uh, data file that you explain what is the data you have collected. Okay? Now the data. Let's go back. And now let's run linear regression without the interaction and see why do we need the interaction. So over here, this data, as you can see, I will run the analysis without the interaction and see what's going on. So, oh, okay. sorry, sorry. <laughs> so over here, I'm going to have enjoyment as the Y, right? Right, guys? And then I will have these two guys and then I want the labels here. I'm going to put residuals and I'm going to specify the output, specify it somewhere nice here, very close and hit OK. And look at the adjusted R square. Adjusted R square is in the negative. This happened to us also in class, if you guys remember, when we uh, made the mistake specifying the, in, uh, the dependent variable. I was a little dizzy. So now when you want to copy the, the, the values, make sure that these values are all in num number. And you've seen what I did when I copied that. Or you can just put it as uh, doco. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, OK, when you copy, you copy as numbers. You know how to do that. Now let's do the food times, food times the condiment. And basically, what you need to do is multiply 1 times this finish. Now let's go ahead and do the following. We are going to take enjoyment as the y and all these guys as the uh, x, the x's, regression, let's go, we're going to take enjoyment, now we're going to take the x variables and labels, the output, Adjusted R square does make a sense, and it's way much better. And all these variables here, the coefficients are significant. And this is the regression analysis. Let's take a look at the skewness and the kurtosis. Even though this this data is not uh, the skewness and the kurtosis, this is for the residual term. So this is the skewness. And this is the port, the kurtosis. And uh, let me, uh, I just uh, did the, all the analysis beforehand. Mm -hmm. I have the table here. So we have a number of observations about 60 or 80. It was 80. Was it really 80? Uh huh. I wonder if it was really 80. Let's see. 1 to 79 now. No, it's 1 to 80. That's good. The labels were not counted. Good. Perfect. So 80, these are the, uh, the, the, the ranges, and we can see that they are both in the range. So the skewness and the kurtosis are in within range. So the normality assumption of the error term is not violated. It is okay. Now let's do the Prussian Pagan test for the heteroscedasticity. I'm not going to plot it because plotting it is going to look so funny, really. So uh, let's, uh, uh, because as you can see here, all the fitted values, as you can see, all of them, the predicted values, are very close to one another. So let's just do the, uh, and anyway, I find it very difficult to interpret the visualization. Let's save time and effort 
and this is the squared residuals, right guys? Now with the squared residuals, we are going to compute the crucial vegan test. So here I'm going to write Let's do it. So we're going to run another linear regression, and the y will be the squared residuals. And the x would be those x's. We don't need the residuals for this test. We just need to compute the chi-square statistic. The chi-square statistic is equal to this, r squared times the observations is 80. And then we need the uh, p-value. The p-value is computed by this uh, function and the degrees of freedom is 3. And as you can see, it's greater than 0 0.05. Then no heterodicity. Anyway, uh, sorry. Now we don't have any heteroscedasticity, we don't have any of that, and um, let's uh, check for the um, multicollinearity. I don't, I don't think we would have a problem with multicollinearity, but let's do multicollinearity if you guys want. It's going to look funny though, uh, for one reason. So we're going to take all these guys. And we're going to make sure that we take the values only. And now we're going to make food as the dependent variable. Then the next attempt, we're going to, let's keep enough space to have the output to, so that we can compute the VIF for food. Now over here, we're going to attempt to compute the VIF for food and condiment. Uh, condiment. And the last test, Let's not put this, so this is, will be food and condiment. And now, the third v, a, a regression analysis is done for computing the VIF for condiment. For this purpose, I'm going to put condiment separately on the side and bold it. Now let's do it very quickly, and I'm going to show you something quite easy right now. And then these are the X's. We don't need any residuals, right guys? And here's the output. The output is this case. And here we go. So the VIF will be 1 over minus the adjusted uh, no not the adjusted this r squared mm, so there's a problem here with multicollinearity uh, we don't really take the food times condiment because food times condiment is kind of related. I don't think multicollinearity, we can use it for categorical vari var variables anyway. Mm, I think so. Guys, I got this data and I, I know for sure that this data doesn't have any problems and it's a very classical example. Let's, uh, yeah, let, it's, it's just interesting, isn't it? It's quite interesting. Let's see the X without Condiment times. And now, if we 
you do 1 over 1 minus r square, it's going to be only 1. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we never take this variable, so we don't need all this. Good. So why didn't we... Uh, why didn't we uh, look into the condiment times B food? Because we know that they, they, it's going to be correlated. It's, uh, in fact, the, this relationship, uh, we know for sure it's going to be correlated and it will affect the VIF. So basically, we just focus on these two variables together. So indeed, if you want to do multicollinearity, you don't do this traditional uh, multicollinearity, but we do this following. Multicollinearity likely to do the following for um, for these because we don't have as you can see uh, any interaction variables you omit it you take it out for multicollinearity you just look into multicollinearity of the uh, significant variables that don't include interaction and since we have only two what we are going to do guys is we are going to go to data analysis and correlation and take the input to be food and condiment. And this is it. And that would be the range. And then hit the I have still got the labels, I think. So as you can see here, even will be undefined if you do it so this is one times one is undefined so this method it's interesting to see that this method it or food and condiments have no correlation whatsoever zero linear correlation and it's multi-collinearity so multi-collinearity is based on the linear relationship between the variables and these ver linear is basically when the variables are originally uh Continuous, but these variables are not continuous. They are categorical. So if they are categorical, the linearity doesn't really mean anything. Aha. Uh -huh. So now we don't really need multicollinearity uh, check for categorical variables. So you understand that? For categorical variables, you don't need multicollinearity check because they are originally categorical variables. And linearity is in, in between continuous variables per se. And actually, if we are going to do multicollinearity this way, we shouldn't generate the Pearson correlation. We should generate the Spearman correlation, the Spearman test. Do you guys remember when I told you earlier that there is something called the Spearman test? So I wonder if they have it in Excel and what would it be in Excel? Hmm. When I come to class next time, I will come prepared. But this is, I, I, I am actually prepping for the class. <laughs> so I said to myself, let me record so that if students find any difficulty in class, they can look into the recording even beforehand. Or if you want to study for the quiz beforehand, I thought that I will give you the, the, uh, uh, the, the result. I just forgot. I, I, am, I, I am now prepping for the class, guys. So uh, I'm sorry if I sound like not sure. This is not a recording for... Uh, a Friday for an on-demand class yeah this is just a recording that I am prepping actually as I'm prepping for the class this is me being very spontaneous prepping for the class so uh, guys with multicollinearity this correlation matrix is producing the uh, Pearson correlation Pearson correlation as I told you at the very beginning of this uh, module it is used for continuous data for linearity continuous data for relationships among a categorical variables, we do a Spearman test. And the Spearman test is not the R square, it is called the alpha. So basically, uh, this Spearman coefficient or Spearman alpha has nothing to do with the VIF. So we don't test for multicollinearity anyway, because they are not linear, they are categorical. Are we done? No, we are not done. Now the fun begins. Now the fun begins. How are we going to interpret this? Pause and think about it and come back to me. All right, you thought about it, huh? How are you going to interpret this? Difficult. The way that we do this, guys, is as follows. The way 
we interpret this is by getting is by prepping something like this do you see that hot dog ice cream and this is the enjoyment but this is the enjoyment of hot dog as a food based on this con condiment which is chocolate sauce maybe chocolate sauce we should put it in brown so this is me i put it in in, in brownish or orange color then mustard i should put it in yellow so here this is mustard so how do you enjoy the food different foods with mustard so you the line is supposed to be mustard and this line is supposed to be for chocolate sauce what does that mean this means i'm gonna go take the data all right i'm gonna go take the data and cluster it a little bit for i put it i rearrange it so i put it in con on, on a, a consecutive order all the data points belonging to the chocolate sauce and all and then arrange all the consecutive data points that belong to the mustard with different food uh, tasting and then i'm going to plot the two points the two, the two lines however over here this is the fitted fitted values these are here these predicted values not this is the predicted values uh, which are the output here uh, 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 it's not my uh, my uh, okay so this is the fitted values all right so we we produce something like this to interpret the results if some of you are uh, <laughs> uh, researchers who looked into some uh, research papers they will come across something like that they might have come across something like that for uh, looking at the interaction all right guys let's get started isn't that interesting this is super interesting really so what are we going to do? Uh, so no need for multicollinearity. And I'm glad that I showed you why we don't need multicollinearity. So this is the data and the results of the uh, linear regression. Now I need to take the data points, not this enjoyment with food. No, I'm going to take food and condiment only. All right. So take it, food and condiment, and make sure that you are taking only the numbers. And then I'm going to take these guys, the predicted values or the fitted values. You can get these uh, uh, readings, of course, uh, through the, uh, you can compute them based on what? Ta -da! You put 278.5 blah, 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 plus this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this however it is already computed for me so why should i play games so i'm going to call this the interaction the plot the interaction plot all right lovely isn't it it's super lovely okay so now what are we going to do as i said earlier we are going to put all the data points that belong to the same condiment together so these belong to the same condiment too and i'm gonna just get rid of uh, a jump all over to here and get it to two or you could do the following or or you could do the following right let's do the following <laughs> let's not be very primitive and do something nice so as you can see here you select the data you go to the custom and then you say sort by condiment either smallest to largest or largest to smallest. So you will have all the twos now and then followed by all the threes and end of story. Isn't it? Yes. So now let's create the plot. The first step is to select the data up to two, which is up to the first type of condiment. This data for the second type of condiment is for the second line. Yeah. So let's draw one of the lines. For condiment number two which is condiment number two it's a, it's a chocolate sauce right and I forgot. let's not forget one is hot dog two is ice cream now two is mustard aha uh -huh, i made a mistake chocolate sauce in three so we are actually plotting the mustard uh, things could happen so what do i need to plot here i'm gonna plot the food 
and the predicted enjoyment, which is the fitted values only. For the values here up to two, all right? So if you want, you can add a line. So here, you can just do it like adding a line so that you will know that I'm going to have to select the values up to here. Okay, good. So now that you selected these values, you're going to go to insert, you're going to go to this line, and uh oh, this is not really what I want. In fact, mm, in fact, I'm going to take this food, put it over here, make sure it is taken like that, and take the predicted values. It is easier and, uh, and better, trust me. Uh, it might look primitive, but it's easier and better. So now, do I have the line still there? Yes, the line is still there. So the line idea wasn't bad, really. So I'm going to select up to the line, which is up to here. Let's make sure this is condiment 2 and this 3. Okay, so this one, I'm going to go insert, and I'm going to go here. You know what was the difference? If you uh, reverse... Uh, uh, um, um, Go back in the in the in the, uh, in the in the video. You'll find out that I have one and two over here, and I have the enjoyment over here. If you switch columns, you're still not gonna get very clean results. I'm not sure. Like, let's do the switch columns. Do you see what happens when you switch columns? You get two points. I don't understand why. So the same applies earlier. So please always put the first uh, uh, variable, which is food here because you want one to be hot dog and two to be ice cream and this whole thing is mustard so I'm gonna add a trend line and because it is mustard and the mustard it has color yellow I'm gonna just put it in yellow so this will be mustard good good now let's add the other line oh nobody can see this for God's sake mm. What happened? Format trend line. Mm, what should I do? Give it a color, Nora, mustard. Uh, oh, well, this color is a little bit darker. Okay. So this is mustard. Okay. So this series, I'm going to call it mustard, right? So this one, let's edit it. Uh, series name, I'm going to call it mustard and now it's must uh, because I changed okay 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 no problem no problem again so maybe we should we should have added the design first the, the outlay the, the yeah and this here mustard linear mustard perfect okay now, what's next? I'm going to add one more. Okay, how do we do that? Basically, you're going to select the graph, go to select data, go to add, and in the Y, you add all the Ys here, the fitted values, not the actual values, the fitted values that we obtained from the regression output, and the Xs will be the food, right? Which is two and one here in this case, okay? And then the series here, we're going to call it a chocolate sauce. And hit OK. You see? And now add the trend line. And this trend line, let's give it a nicer color. Let's give it more colors. I would like it to be brownish. So I'm going to hit OK. So that will be the chocolate. So this is linear chocolate. This is linear mustard. So that is, uh, you can see now. Of course, over here, let's start with 50. So that it is a minimum three to 50 so that we can see uh, the lines better. And well, the way that you want to do is here. Uh, in fact, I'm probably going to put it like that. No, no, no. Maybe something like... Uh, Whatever this 
design that you like, really. Mm. How do you want to do it? It's up to you. I'm going to just take it and tell you if you are... Now we are almost done, right? But if you are a researcher and you want to put it in your, uh, uh, in your thesis, what are you going to do? Yeah? So paste it as an image. And now, over here, first thing first, this is chocolate, right? So I'm going to show you how to do with a little manipulation how to get rid of all these. So this here, I'm going to get rid of these. There's no need for it. On the fill, I'm going to take the eye drop and fill it this way. And ta-da! Oh, there is a here format. I don't want the line, so no line. Nobody can see anything, right? Hmm? Perfect, isn't it? The same one, copy and paste. Uh, so oh, we can put it here. And this is hidden. The same one. Either it's in white or in black, same situation, covered. Right, guys? You can make it a little bigger to cover everything. So now, instead of all this, I'm going to also extend this to cover all these guys. Right? I don't need these guys. Instead, I'm going to put here fo uh, the food preference which is over here, uh, this food is what, a uh, hot dog, right? Maybe I am wrong, let's take a look. The coding, hot dog is number one, ice cream is number two. So basically you put here hot dog and you take this and put here Then, of course, here, chocolate. This is mustard. And do not forget to add here. Mm, do not forget to add here enjoyment. This is average enjoyment, which is, as I told you, do you remember at the very beginning of the uh, uh, lectures on uh, linear regression? I told you it's linear regression is like as an average. So this is the fitted values. This is the predicted values. It's the average, the estimated enjoyment. So you can put it as fitted enjoyment, estimated enjoyment, average enjoyment. Now, how, how do you interpret this? If these two lines do not intercept, do not uh, cut through each other, then there's no interaction. If they cut through each other, there is an interaction. How do you interpret this? You interpret this by saying, hot dog, as you can see here, taste better, hot dog, here hot dog. This is low, this is high enjoyment. When Where is the high enjoyment? With mustard. So hot dog tastes better with mustard. Or mustard brings higher enjoyment to hot dog compared to ice cream. You see that? So you can say hot dog tastes better with mustard. As you can see here, the enjoyment of mustard is about 90. Uh, while the hot dog enjoyment rate with chocolate is 65. Ice cream, on the other hand, tastes better with the chocolate with an average enjoyment of over 90% compared to its taste when we add a mustard with an enjoyment of around 60. Here's 65, here's 60. Okay? So this is how you talk about the enjoyment, uh, the, the, the interaction. Then, if you want to take this as part of your research, you copy this. Oh, looking so awful, right? And then basically you go wherever you want to go and paste it as an image, as a picture. So now it is all together a picture. Do not forget to add here the uh, title. <laughs> I forgot. You need, oh, but basically in research you write here figure five and the interaction plot. All right, so I hope this lecture has helped you you plot the interaction plot. First of all, with interaction, you'll find out that there's no multicollinearity check for linear regression. Only if you want to take a look at the heteroscedasticity and, of course, the linearity assumption of the error term, not the independent variables of the error term. 
Second, you start go ahead and work with uh, interpreting the coefficients is lame. Uh, you interpret this kind of a plot. We call it the interaction plot. So this is how you in, uh, um, interpret the uh, results. And this is really a beautiful clean cut kind of, uh, 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 yeah. Here, an interaction plot. So I'm going to add it here, and I will see you. Look forward to seeing you guys on Tuesday so that we can do this together uh, on Tuesday. Thank you so much. Take care, you guys. Enjoy the weekend. Bye bye.